I work in a field called dynamics, and um, that's the shorthand for it. It's also known as dynamical systems. Um, and as, as the term suggests, it's very dynamic. It's all about motion. It's all about the evolution of systems over time. For example, the motion of the planets uh, around a sun in a solar system. The actual results I prove might not ever have application. I wouldn't be surprised if kind of the way that I've thought about things will kind of dissipate through the, through the mathematical ether until um, it becomes applicable. Ways of thinking about problems take hundreds of years before they find application. I actually tried doing some applicable stuff, um, working with some physicists who designed particle accelerators. And as it turns out, the kind of problems that they want to answer are extremely closely related to abstract problems in dynamical systems. The abstract problems that they're related to are not exactly the abstract problems that I'm an expert in, so I couldn't be as helpful as I wanted, but, but you know, they're trying to answer questions like, can you design a particle accelerator? A particle doesn't escape and punch a hole through a wall, right? I mean, this is kind of, there's some very like interesting practical problems that come up in the design of, of something massive uh, like a particle accelerator that are highly relevant in exactly the kind of problems that people think about in abstract dynamical systems. I do see change. I see not enough change. Um, I still think there's a vast wealth of unexploited talent, undeveloped talent um, among women and other underrepresented minorities in mathematics. If you look at the numbers of women at all different levels, in mathematics, they haven't really gone up as much as you might expect. But I am hopeful and, you know, there's some good signs. So for example, where I teach at the University of Chicago in our current first year class of PhD students, we have 50% women. Some words of advice I would give are, first of all, to go meet mathematicians. You know, if you love mathematics, it's very, very hard to imagine what it's like to do math for a living and that that's even like a possibility. And I think that a lot of young people can't even imagine that it's possible to do math for a living. It is possible and it's a wonderful life. You kind of have to see it to understand it. It's like I always imagined when I was young that being a mathematician kind of meant you were locking yourself in a room trying to solve hard problems. But that's such a small part of it. There's communication, there's teaching, there's mentoring, there's collaboration, there's travel. There's so many aspects to being a mathematician that I just had no idea were, were there. Another piece of advice that I find myself giving repeatedly to young people is don't compare yourself to other people. Try as little as possible to do that because everyone finds their path to science and math in a different way. People develop at their own pace. It's not just a matter of being fast. It's not just a matter of beating everyone else and being better than everyone else. Try to focus on what you enjoy about math and about the sciences and not so much on where you are relative to other people because that sorts itself out over time.